Good afternoon, good evening, good whatever, I really don't know. I'm afraid to say this lecture is being delivered to you from the Swiss Air a business lounge at Heathrow Airport, owing to what can only be described as a technical cock-up, meaning that instead of joining you in person and you all seeing my smart new suit, I'm afraid to say that I'm going to have to record this damn thing because my flight has been at present delayed no less than five hours. I'm going to talk um, exclusively about Bogomazov and I'm going to concentrate on the letter M because I feel like it. And it's really about Bogomazov's history on the market, on the marketplace. Also it'll deal with various masterpieces, missings, museums, modernism, misappropriation, misinformation, and I'm ready to commit murder to anybody who delays my flight further. So this is a bit of an overview of Bogomaza between 1973 and 2022. I'm really sorry, I'm in a, in a little sort of booth and if people walk past with their suitcases and speaking in tongues, I do apologize, but that, as they say, is the miracle of modern technology. Right, so Bogomaza first appeared on the Western art market in November 1973 at Fisher Fine Arts in St. James's in London excellent exhibition called Tatlin's Dream. It remains one of the seminal events of the Russian avant-garde in the West. And at this um, particular exhibition, there were six Bogomazovs, but we only know the location of two of them. Now, this is why I put this, these Technicolor frames around items. These are the items we know where they are. The others have disappeared appeared into the ether and quite frankly it's extremely important that we find them again because um, the uh, celebrated Dr. Akinsha intends to do a catalogue resume and I intend to help him as much as I can and it's very important that we find as many pictures as we can. The two that we know about are Sakli which is owned by Mr. Pinchuk in Kiev and the self-portrait by Abokamazov which is now in the Krolomulo Museum. <laughs> 1974, a auction at Sotheby's, there were a large number of works by Bogomazov, and here are three of the oils. We know the location of all three of them. The middle one's in Buffalo, the one on the right's in New York, and there were some terrific works on paper. I think the one in the middle is particularly fine, the Cubo Futurist piece. Uh, further works, the only one of which we know the location of, and there is, I believe, a gentleman in the audience who is aware of its location, is the one on the right, an absolutely beautiful carafe and uh, glass. Further works, the two still lives on the right hand, on the right hand side on, in the center are, I think, of particular interest. Then there's this sort of, ex, must be an ex libris, I think, on the left, watercolor, this futuristic uh, landscape in the middle, and another still life. There was also at the same auction, and this is very typical of Bogomazov in the 1970s. No one knew the, what the hell they were talking about. There was no information available. And so, for example, this really terrific triple portrait of a man, as then catalogued, was sold by Sotheby's. But in reality, of course, it's Sergei Rudich, who was Bogomazov's uh, brother-in-law. Same thing here with this magnificent drawing at the 1974 Sotheby's auction. It says workmen sawing wood. Well, we all know now that it's a study, a finished study, what's more, for Bogomazov's great triptych. This is the central section. This is a study. I'd give my IT for, or I'd actually, I'd give a ticket to Zurich to actually be able to acquire this thing. 1978 Park Burnett, New York. I'm just merely showing that there were uh, the, the, there was a little bit of an upswell of interest in Bogomazo in America as well. First time 1979 Park Burnett, there were also some mention of price. So 450, 500, 400. It's starting to sell things out. Of course, these prices are laughable now. Sotheby's 1992, very good oils. The one on the left is in America. The owners are in contact with me. And the one on the right is a bit of a curate's egg, which would require, the phrase the curate's egg would require a separate lecture to actually explain what it is. Anyway, the reason for that is that this kind of misinformation is, it's, it's in, in a sense quite entertaining, but it's also quite important that we start to actually deeply research this artist so there isn't misinformation because this picture was first shown in 1966 at the Kiev Writers Union, a seminal event because it was the first time that Bogomazov had been exhibited publicly since 1930 and it was correctly catalogued then as being Sakli. By the time, which Sakli by the way is a, is a, a, a place in the Gunakarabakh in Armenia, 
uh, slash Azerbaijan, just depends who's got the largest Kalashnikov. And it's the name of a place in the Gona Karabakh where Togamazov was in 1916. By 1973, it's got renamed as composition in grey, black, and white at Fisher. Sotheby's sell it as an abstract landscape in 1990. Sotheby's then sell it again as an abstract landscape. But on this occasion, they actually get the place right. Prices. This is quite interesting. 1990, this picture went for £33,000 at Sotheby's. Lempert's in Germany then sold it for €86,000 in 2003. By 2005, that price has absolutely skyrocketed to €1.1 million, Euros, which remains a world record at auction for this artist. The world record price privately, I will tell you a little later in this quite fascinating talk. Now, here is a further two M's, the splendidly eccentric Martin Muller, who is the sole director of modernism, who has been instrumental in the propagation of Bogomazdov over the years. Now, Martin actually put on the first uh, serious personal exhibition of Bogomazdov in his gallery in San Francisco in 1983. It remains an incredibly important event, and Martin has probably done more than any other dealer in promoting Bogomazov on the world stage. Now, here are some of the examples of works that Martin has sold over the years. Beautiful, what appears to be uh, a Caucasus landscape on the left, the sort of slightly fantastic uh, landscape on the right. This tremendous uh, Caucasus landscape, again with this, I love the little couple, top left of the drawing, walking up the hill. It's so sort of esoteric and beautiful. Then this extraordinary thing, which was named wedding scene. God knows why it's a wedding scene, because the husband and wife appear to be doing different things, which is not what, what is supposed to happen on your wedding day. And terrific rare in this piece from 1914. Uh, we showed this at Tifa in 2016. Then this, here comes the misinformation bit. So when Martin acquired this picture, he really didn't know what it was. And so it was called In the Village as being circa 1910. But of course, we now know the reality is that it's catapult. It's the putting of a body in a coffin. And it was kind of a reaction to the death of Bogomazov's very much loved father-in-law, Vitold. And you can actually date it exactly as 20, uh, 1920. In fact, this picture sold at auction last year. Further misinformation, this tremendous Cubo Futurist drawing, everything's called Cubo Futurist composition in Bogomazov if they don't know what it's called. And it's faintly bizarre that they couldn't read the Russian writing at the bottom right. Sorry, I said the word Russian. The, the, the Russian writing at the bottom right of the piece of paper, which tells you that the picture is actually called Spring in the Caucasus. These are two theoretical pieces that Martin also discovered that I think are probably really important in the study and propagation of this artist, but require further study. Two tremendous self-portraits, um, which uh, Martin also discovered. I think we have to assume the violin, uh, the, the cellist on the right is a, is a self-portrait. It was known that Bogomazov uh, was a very fine musician and did someone sometimes portray himself as such. Now, <clears throat> M for masterpiece, in this case, Mega Rooney masterpiece. This Cubo Futurist composition from 1914 to 1915 is another of Martin's discoveries, and I am bleating from every orifice to try and get him to find it so that we can start showing it in public places. It's a masterpiece. Museums. Now, bizarrely, this funny little world of ours, before we all went start raving mad, um, there is a museum in Little Rock, Arkansas home of those two doyens to good governance, Mr. and Mrs. Clinton, I kid you not, the Arkansas Art Centre, with whom I got in touch six, seven years ago. Delightful people. Anyway, they sent me a lot of photographs. This is the Arkansas Art Centre. Now, I'm only putting this in so you know that they're currently under reconstruction. Now, they sent me a large number of photographs and by Bogomazov. They knew they were by Bogomazov, but they didn't know very much about them. And yours truly jumped on a plane. You'll be surprised to hear there are no direct flights. God, I do hate talking about flights. There are no flights direct to Little Rock, Arkansas. So you fly to Atlanta and then you fly on. 
But in the collection, there were these three lovely portraits of Wanda. Now, the one in the middle is actually quite interesting because in the Museum of Ukrainian Art personal exhibition of Bogomazov in 2019, that picture is illustrated as being whereabouts unknown. Well, actually, we know where it is. It's in downtown Arkansas, which is, again, <coughs> it's kind of one of the facts that we need to bear in mind, the need for the sharing of information. We need as much information as we possibly can to propagate this. Uh, there were two oils, both from 1912 and 1914, further drawings, and this tremendous self-portrait, which I think is probably quite late, maybe 26, 27. It shows a very contented man, which is surprising, seeing as he was, had tuberculosis. And he's also not wearing his normal pince nez, he's wearing glasses, but it's such a, such a beautifully executed drawing. Now, when I went to Arkansas, um, I was shown all these figure studies. This is how they were catalogued to me. This is how they were told. First of all, of God rot, they catalogued him as Russian. He's not Russian. Anyway, I've shown these four uh, drawings as being figure studies. Now, the reason that I've kept in the bequest of Andre Seymour is to continue on the M theme. Andre Seymour was actually murdered in a drive-by. Sounds absurd, but he was. And Andre Seymour, who was a chef, had a very distinguished collection of 15 works by Bogomaz, all of which he bequeathed to the museum. Now, we all know that these four drawings are actually figures from the seminal work of Sawyer's triptych from 1926 to 1929. So we know what they are. They're all studies for this important triptych. Missing in Oscar. Further pictures by Bogomarza. We don't know where all of these are. In fact, most of them, we still don't know where they are. For example, the portrait of the Burluk on the left, we know where it is. It's a magnificent, important drawing from 1913. On the right is this fantastic, it's like sort of Archimboldo self-portrait from 1916. And it's one of those really sad stories that I sold this in 1996 to a, the wife, a particularly revolting wife, I have to say, in a public place, a particularly revolting wife of an oligarch. And when I contacted her two or three years ago, and I said, look, have you still got this? Because it's an incredibly important piece and we want to research it and we want to do more work on it. She, of course, went, "Nyet," which is a Russian word that gets used far too often. Two further pictures, the location of which we don't know. Expectation from 1907, 1908 on the left. Bridge Moscow from the same date. We just don't know where they are. And these are important pieces from Bogomazov's symbols period. Portrait of Wonder on the left, writing such a touching portrait. And this absolutely gobsmacking Cubo Futurist masterpiece on the right, Forest Buerta. We don't know where they are. <coughs> we need to know where they are. Now, as I'm just taking a drink of water, it really should be vodka and tonic. It's the only way to get through the day. Missing in Moscow. Misappropriated by monstrous Machiavelli. Brilliant play on words, is it not? But these are, I'm, I'm now going to talk about a group of pictures that were basically confiscated by the Russian state for uh, the owner having apparently not paid his taxes, which is something that I think is a little bit difficult to believe. I think the problem was the pictures just happens to be Ukrainian. Now, these were all confiscated in 2013. Two self-portraits, 1907 on the left, 1914 on the right. Two portraits of Wanda, <coughs> 1910 on the left, 1915 on the right. Magnificent female portrait on the left, but it's a double-sided uh, canvas, as I'm sure a lot of you know, canvases were incredibly short supply in the fun-packed Soviet Union, so they tended to paint on both sides of the canvas. Left-hand side is female portrait, Right hand side is Sawdust Carriers, a girl with a hoop from 1914, and now we're getting into the mega masterpieces, Haymarket from 1914. These are big, big pictures, a metre by 95. It's an important for the masterpiece, Haymarket, Senyorinok in Kiev. It's an incredibly important picture, but 
No more or less important than locomotive, which rather conveniently brings me back to the world record price privately because I sold this picture in 2008, post crisis, I hasten to add, to Mr. Grigorishin, the owner of all these pictures, and the price was two and a half million dollars. That remains a world record for this artist privately. Among the pictures expropriated, misappropriated, call it what you will, of course, is electrical fitted from 1915. And worst of all, and saddest of all, this is Bogomazos, in my opinion, greatest masterpiece, Armenian woman from 1916. It's a sort of bonkers flight of fantasy when the artist has clearly, is clearly at one with himself because he's representing an Armenian woman in a manner so far removed from reality and yet so brilliantly executed. I think this is a world masterpiece. And the absurdity is that the owner actually bought this in Kiev and then on the assumption that, that Russia was going to become a normal country, <laughs> a vain hope as we're now discovering today, he exported the damn thing to Russia and it's been confiscated. This is a world masterpiece. It's a mega tragedy. This, in my opinion, is Bogomazov's finest picture. However, something rather odd happened six days before Mr. Putin decided to move his drinks cabinet closer to Kiev, was that up at Art Investment, there was an auction of this very, very small uh, portrait of Wanda uh, Bogomazov's wife, which came up for sale. It was sold for 52,000 euros hammer, but why on earth did it, a confiscated picture, appear at auction? And if relations were normal with Russia, I would now be out there knocking on every single blinking door I could to find out if this picture has been sold, where are the other pictures? Now, I'm going to draw your attention as I draw to a close this riveting speech to two earth-shattering events. On the left is the exhibition catalogue for TIFA 2022, Oleksandr Bohomazov, Ukrainian Renaissance. This is our exhibition 26 works by Bogomazov which was shown at TFAF and at the same time the wonderful Antiquar magazine which is I suppose it's uh, uh, the uh, Ukrainian equivalent of Apollo will also come out and for reasons best known to their psychiatrists the owners have asked me to be guest editor this month now the um, episode the edition is entirely devoted to Bogomazov and on the cover we have the magnificent locomotive, which I sold to the Krolomola Museum in 2015. So in thanking you for your rapt attention, which I'm sure it was, um, please, 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 can I invite you to come to TFAF this year between the 24th of June and the 30th of June, stand number 709, we've got a very, very big 50 square metre stand this year. We're putting on the exhibition, Alexander Bogomaz, Ukrainian Re Renaissance, please, 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 do come and visit and thank you so much for listening i'm so sorry i couldn't be with you in person thank you <laughs>